Um, my name is Linda Barker and this is um, Bailey and he's, he's a Labradoodle. Um, and today I'm going to put him into a relatively short, easy maintenance um, pet trim. Um, and to do that we're going to use the Whirl Switchblade Clipper and the Snap-on Comb Attachments to help um, reduce the time it takes to do and speed up the process. Good boy, stay. Good boy, good boy. Going to use the number four blade, which is the peach comb attachment, and a ten blade itself, which, which just literally snaps over the top of that. Um, and start from the back of the neck and use this to reduce the body down in length. Good boy. Labradoodle coats do vary considerably in what we see come into the salon. Sometimes they're very poodly, sometimes they can be like this, and others can be very, um, a bit look, look a bit like golden retrievers, um, and obviously they're the ones that, you know, still molt. Um, so then there's no guarantee what the coat is like when you've got a Labradoodle coming in. The ones that don't molt are obviously quite high maintenance and need regular grooming and trimming. You see, the longer the coat is, the higher maintenance it is for the owner at home. So generally, they just usually want something that looks a reasonable length to manage. So the dog can go on average around about six weeks between coming to see the groomer. The comb attachments work really, really well with doing this sort of work because it reduces your time down. Rather than scissoring the body down, it just reduces the length of time it takes to reduce the body length down. And does it in a neat and even manner. Well, relatively short on the body, but obviously the longer that you, you leave the body length with the comb attachment, it's not quite as neat and as even as when you do a shorter length. So sometimes if you leave it very long using the comb attachment, you then just need to go and perhaps tidy it up with your scissors afterwards. And you get round to his head, hold his head up, and just run under his, his throat line. You tend to clip the way that the coat grows, you follow the line that the coat grows. When you get to the front legs, don't just run it off slightly as you get to the top of the front leg. Don't go in too deep because you'll, you'll make him get, taper in too much. So you want a natural blend of the coat so when you come to scissoring, it's just easy blended in. Again, keep going over the body here. Until you virtually get nothing coming off. You should have a nice even length to then work with. When you come down to the, the back leg, again, run it slightly off the top of the leg. And to show the dog's natural angulation, run the clipper down at this point. It gives you a good outline to start with when you start scissoring the back leg in. Just run it off so it gives you the natural shape of the dog's leg. And then come down the sides and then just gradually 
don't go in quite so deep with the clipper, just blend it in and run it off slightly. So you're just gently combing it through the coat. And then when you come back up to here, run it through again. So you get to the point where you get nothing else coming on. As you can see there's virtually nothing coming off now. So we need to turn him round and do and do the other side. Once you've clipped both sides um, with your clipper, give the coat a good comb in the opposite direction, combing the hair up and then run the clippers exactly what you've just done over it again. Just to remove. Just see if it just takes anything else off. Just so you get that really neat finish. Before you finish um, with the clippers, another good thing to do is lift the back leg up and run down the opposite back leg with your clipper just to get rid of some of the hair in there so it's less for you to scissor when you come through your legs. And do that leg and then do pick the opposite leg up and do exactly the same on the opposite side. Once you've done the body, um, the next thing to do would be to start to do your, your legs. Um, the first thing I do when I, before I do my legs is pick up the feet and clear the inside of the pads. And for that, I might like use this little clipper. It's really light and easy to use and ideal for doing this sort of thing. One foot down. Good boy. So we put down. And go around to do the front pads as well. That quite easy but just pick, pick the front foot up and down by the ankle lift it backwards so you've got easy access to the underneath of the foot. Turn him around to do the other foot. Um, once you've done the pads, um, the other area to clear once you've got this issue tipper is the growing area. This is ideal for getting underneath here, just clearing away the excess hair around the groin area. Good boy. Push on that side and turn it around and do the other side. Uh, once you've cleared your, your pad, um, then with your comb, comb all your 
foot hair out so you can see exactly where it is before you start trimming around the foot. And you want to create a nice cat-like neat foot. Poodle comb is absolutely ideal for combing out your hair whilst you're trimming. You can see exactly what needs to come off. Put your foot down again and then give it a good comb through to see what needs to come off. Once you've got a nice neat foot, you then start by bringing, reducing the length down on the leg. Give yourself a nice neat leg. Now, while you've taken the clipper in and given yourself your angulation, just start blending and neating that area up. See, with the, with the poodle crosses, you haven't always got the thickness and density of you, that you would have in a poodle coat. So hence you get the, the coat going in different direction, whirls and swirls, um, as you can see on his back legs there. So it's not always the easiest coats to come up neat. You just have to work with what you've got and make the best of it. The coats do go in all different directions. It hasn't got quite the density that a poodle coat, the full-blown poodle coat, would have. Although saying that, some of the labradoodles we do see come in are extremely woolly. And then you've got the opposite extreme where they're very sparse coats. So it's very hit and miss in what you see. And you'll fit. you have to govern on the day what you've, what you've got in front of you and what you do to it. Again, keep lifting the coat up, just blending, blending the leg in to a reasonable length. Remember that this is purely a maintenance trim and not for grooming competitions or anything like that. This is to get your owner probably a six week window before coming to see you again. The other thing you sometimes find with the Labradoodles as well, that the coat is sometimes a little bit thinner or grows in different directions in certain areas. So his hair here is quite a lot thinner than it is elsewhere. So you comb it up, you've got to remember it's going to fall back into its own position and where it wants to go rather than hold itself like a traditional poodle coat would do.
And Bailey doesn't carry it that much hair on his legs. Um, again, it's just easy maintenance for him and his owner. So. Just tidy up what he's got anywhere. on the outside of the leg and go around to the back and work from the back combing out what you've got again just scissoring off in a neat If you need to, you can hold the opposite leg up to get a better view of what you're doing whilst working on the other side of the opposite leg. I won't take too much off because he's a lot thinner here than he is on the sides of his legs. It's just the natural growth of the coat. That should be his first of his legs completed. We'll do exactly the same thing on the other leg, the other side. Uh, once you finish doing the other back leg, um, just tidy up around the bottom area. Although he it doesn't actually grow that much coat around that area. Just tidy up whatever the dog has actually got. Not to leave too much, so it's an area it will get, or can get a bit messy. And then and go and do your front legs. Right, the front leg, same as the back leg, start off round by the base of the foot, uh, giving them Start by giving the dog a nice, tight, neat foot. Go with your comb, pull out any excess hair that you might be able to find. Put your foot down. Good boy. Yeah, I know, I don't really want your foot. <laughs> I want it on the table, thank you. Good boy. If your dog does want to lift up the foot you're trying to work on, a good trick is to lift the opposite leg up. And they should eventually put their leg down that you want to work on. And once you've pulled all the hair out, lift the foot up again. And then comb all the hair forward. Over the pads and then trim off what 
hangs over. Put the foot back down again and have a look. Just tidy up what, again what needs to come off. Once you've tied it around your foot, comb your foot up so you can see what needs to come off and then create a nice tubular front leg. Comb and lift the coat up so you can see what needs to come off. And remember when you're scissoring not to take it, although he is quite short here already, not to take off too much here to give the sort of boot effect which you can get if you do, if you take him too short there. So you want to give a, create a nice tubular front, front leg. It can still be short, but as long as you maintain the, the correct um, shape, it doesn't look too, too out of place. Right, and then start from where you've clipped your, your um, body. Start blending the hair that you've got left on the leg. Again, keep lifting it with your comb so you can see what needs to come off. He doesn't need a lot. He's got a little bit of hair here missing, so he doesn't really need much off there, apart from blending. If you're going to do a labradoodle for um, a grooming competition, then you'd probably choose one with a slightly thicker woolier coat. Say Bailey is probably about the average that you sort of see coming in on a regular basis um, to a grooming salon. So this is we found this is the best way to deal with this particular type of coat that he has got. So they don't all come in with a perfect coat, usually the perfect scissors result that you would need for a grooming competition. And they're saying that he still does come up as short as what he is, he still comes up looking quite neat and quite presentable and quite nice. Inside of the other leg up, as you can see, what you need to come off on the inside of his front leg, and again, just blend it to a reasonable length.
Good boy. And the front leg area is often wet here it gets matted. So you can take that as short as possible without looking making it look too short. It's rather useful for both yourself and the owner. Areas like there and also where the dog wears a collar. Areas that tend to get matted the first and round also the sides of the cheeks on the face. So the areas to sort of really see if you can keep as short as possible. If you know the dog is inclined to knot up quite quickly and easily. Good boy. She's just taking off the last few ends that you can see, and that's his, his front leg virtually done. Right, that's one leg done. Now you need to turn him round and do exactly the same thing on the opposite side. Once you've finished doing your front legs, um, then go and complete your tail. I'll start by blending the hair that joins the body, just to graduate it into the tail itself. Where it meets the body, it's slightly different texture to the rest of it. So it's a bit more woolly there than it is elsewhere. And again, like the cockapoo, just take the end off and then slightly flag it. And the easiest way to do it is just to flag it a bit, just to reduce it down slightly. As long as it's blended at the base of the tail, it's the main. Once all your body and your legs have been done, you, then your last bit to do is your head. And again, I'd like to use the comb attachment and the clipper for that to reduce the length of hair down. We used a four comb or a peach comb to do the body. So if you go up two to do the head, that would be the six. Um, that, if you just run that off the top of the head and down the sides of the cheeks, that will reduce the hair and save time as well in trimming and give a, a reasonable, easy, maintainable length. Start at the back of your head, back of the neck. Just keep running the comb attachment and flip it over. Blends it in nicely into the neck. Right. And then go back the other way. And 
once you've done that. Come down the side of the cheeks. And so this is an area that we do tend to find max easily on this type of um, cross. So you take out as much as you can with that, without going too short. Easy it is for the owner for in between visits. Again, you do exactly the same thing the opposite side. Lift the ear up and then the coat and flip it down the side of the cheeks. And with the ears. Again, you run the comb attachment over the top of the ears. Turn it over. And over the inside. And then the other side is exactly the same. As with all the doodle crosses, there's no set guidelines as to what to do because there's obviously no breed specific breed standard to follow. So really, it's really what works best for the owners in way of maintenance. And this is really just a, a real commercial salon trim that works best for owner and dog. Once you've done that, do comb, comb it all up and see what you can see to trim off. Make sure it's completely blended at the back of the neck. And then comb it over his eyes. You want to clear his eyes, as you can see. Once you clear the top of his fringe, and then clear the corners of the eyes. Again, comb forward. Take off what sticks out, hold the ear up, comb up the side of the cheeks. So Bailey is actually kept quite short. So he hasn't got a lot to come off this time round. And again, the same thing the other side. Straighten up his, his beard. Good boy. Good boy. Can leave the ears long or short. Again, it really works what works best for the owner or what the owner actually wants. Because there's, again, there's no set guidelines to what should or should, shouldn't happen. So the, the main criteria is generally a neat short trim that is maintainable. So most of our clients here go on long muddy walks, so it's generally the shorter the better that works for them. Right, then once you've done his, his, he's got a lot, if they have a lot of excess hair on top of the bridge of the nose, you can clear that as well.
Turn around the eye so it doesn't obstruct his vision. And then with his ears, and just basically chewing around, following the general shape of the ear. Come here. Good boy. If you, know, if you use your thumb as a guide, feel where the leather is. You go below that. And same thing to the other ear. I tend to think they look better with short ears, although some people prefer them to have long ears. So they can be left longer, they can be shorter. It just only really works what, what works best for the owner. That's, that's Bailey done.